Edit audio. After I graduated college, there was just a, a short period of time where I lived with my mom. I have to tell you, it wasn't pretty. I was broke. I didn't have, like, a lot of direction. And as I was trying to just settle into the dumpster fire that my life had become in my mom's Dallas apartment, I noticed that the phone was ringing, like, all the time. I also noticed that she didn't seem to want to answer it. Hey, don't don't worry about that, okay? It's probably like a salesperson or something. Now, this was before cell phones, so you know that my ass was not going to let that phone keep ringing. I mean, it could have been one of my college friends, you know, calling to take me out of the misery of my life for just a few minutes. So I started picking up the phone, only to realize that these calls were all from creditors trying to collect on debt that my mom had decided to stop paying. And I remember being like, Mom, what the fuck is going on? How are you in so much debt? Well, now that was a mistake. I saw both her back and her eyebrow arch. I'll tell you how I got into debt. You needed sneakers. You needed... Yeah, I tuned her out. It was all too much. I didn't have any money either. If I had, I wouldn't be sleeping on her apartment floor. So what was going to happen now? Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Hopkins, and this is Well Adjusting, where I talk to people about life stuff, but not in an NPR way. It's more like we're at the bar, having cocktails, getting into your business sort of way. It's it's giving drunk NPR. Oh, and producer Steph is here, too. Hello. Today we chat, well, when your family fucks with your finances. Hey, friends. Ugh. I am so very excited to share today's episode with you all. Ruby is our guest, and she is a well-adjusting listener who hit me up on the Instagram saying that she wanted to come on the show and talk about her finances. Well, hello, folks. You know me. I love a finance episode. So after talking with her, I got to tell you, I loved Ruby, too. And I was like, let's do this, right? And I have to say, yes, this chat is about finances, but it is also about generational trauma, setting boundaries, and remembering that, hey, when your family hands you a bag of crap, you have to remind yourself that it is not your fault. Now, before we get into this interview, if you are a listener like Ruby and you're thinking about a problem and you want some help with it, all you have to do is just drop us an email at hello at editodd.io, or you can DM me on any of those dumb social platforms at Real Rob Hops. Now, let's get to Ruby. Hi, all. I'm Ruby Ahmad, and I like to call myself a jack of all trades and master of none <laughs> because I do too many things. Uh, but I'm currently a healthcare worker. And what's the big question that you came to us with today? The big question um, is definitely about my finances, just navigating that in life. That's why I reached out to you. So you listen. So you have to know that finances are like, I'm such a dork. Like, I'm like, ooh, we got yeah. a finance episode. So. You gotta, you're going to have to start. Just give us the lay of the land of what's the trouble, because I suspect there's some. Oh, there's a ton. I mean, where do I even start, to be honest? Well, I just moved. Um, and the reason why I moved is many things. I mean, part of it is kind of getting away from my family, but also just because financially, I couldn't afford living in L.A. anymore. Rent was so expensive. You have to make like six figures in order to afford an apartment in L.A. And I don't. Like, I am somebody who didn't graduate college and I'm just trying to make it in life. So I moved to Oregon with my partner, my two cats. That's where I'm at right now. I am still financially struggling because I'm starting a new job and it feels like a fresh new start. And I've had, I think about 10 different like fresh starts in the last year and a half. So that's where I'm at right now. It's been, I'm tired of a fresh start, but this one feels great. Just (laughs) tired of fresh starts. Okay, so there's that was just a couple of sentences, but I feel like there was a lot in there. Yeah. Tell us what you do for a living and your like financial setup, because you mentioned you've had a whole bunch of fresh starts, and everybody knows, I think, every time you move, it's expensive. Yeah. I work at a children's hospital. Okay. Moving here, it just, it was expensive, but we did get help from uh, my partner's family. Okay. Because we, we told them that we were married. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> we got and married they just didn't on, get invited just, to the wedding. <laughs> so we we basically said, "Oh yeah, we eloped 
And um, they're just like, oh, that's amazing. And <laughs> they helped us find it's like, oh, here's like a basically like a wedding present. And then they're asking like, oh, when's the wedding ceremony? I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll have that later when we have more money. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how we moved here was based on a lie that we just told we told my partner's family. <laughs> well, hopefully your partner's family doesn't listen to this, but let's let's just make the assumption no. they're not going to. OK, so I, I have a couple of questions. Um, sure. Do you and your partner share finances and do you have debt? I have debt. And yes, we do share finances. Sharing finances has been something of not wouldn't say recently, but more recently because one of us, either one of us has been out of work. Okay. And your partner, does he also have debt? He also has debt. Okay. You have shared debt or individual debt? Individual debt. So, I mean, I don't know exactly what his debt is, but mine is like, it's really odd things. One of it is school related. The other one is oddly Verizon. Um, It's phone related. And that's because it's not my fault. A lot of it is not even my fault. A lot of this debt is because my family, my parents have taken my social security and use it to get things. Okay. So a lot of my own debt is not that. And then also, of course, hospital bills, um, which is odd because you would think insurance would cover it, but they didn't cover a procedure that I had a couple of years ago. And of course, credit cards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> are we talking, are we talking 10 grand? Are we talking 20 grand overall? Like what are we talking? Cause it sounds like you've got a lot of little debts. A lot of little debts. I would say like 10 grand, maybe a little bit more like 15, I would say, because okay. a lo- <laughs> 20. Verizon alone, 25 is as high as I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. Cause honestly, like when it comes to Verizon that, so someone bought my brother, who's my basically an adopted brother that I mm-hmm. have, he used my social security to like buy phones. And now I'm like almost $5,000 in debt with Verizon. So Jesus because, Christ. Yeah. And that's because like my mom gave him my social security number because they were like doing this weird phone thing. And this was like years ago, but that's in collections right now. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I, so not only do you have debt, but there's like trauma around this as well. You have like oh, family, families who are doing things. So we're going to have to talk like a bunch of different little avenues, right? So like, first yeah. I have to talk about your family because you know, as we always say on this podcast, money is never about money. Money is about mm-hmm. your, your history to money. Money is about your family, your upbringing, like your relationship to money. Like if your parents taught you about money or didn't teach you about money, you are an extreme like of that. Not only did they not teach you, it sounds like they stole yeah, from you. They did. And so my, my first question is, have you ever like, did you try to go down any legal routes with that to try to like clear that up? Or is there too much family entanglement to do that? You're just like, I don't care. I'll take it. Um, it's too much family entanglement for me to even try. I've tried taking control of it, like um, just telling them like, hey, I can handle this. But because they don't believe that I can, they still try to have control. Say more about that. How do you mean that? I, my family tends to always, I wouldn't maybe belittle me. I would, that was probably not the right word. But what they do is just, just like, oh, no, 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 I can handle it for you because they don't want me to worry about things. But it's just for them, it's a control issue. They want to control some aspect of my life because they feel like they have no control over me. So financially, that's something that they do is having a certain control over me. So how would that look? Basically, like, for example, they got me a car that I never asked for a couple of years ago. And it's under my name and my mother's name. And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll handle the payments. Mm -hmm. And over time, she stopped paying for it. So they almost took the car away this year. Yeah. And let's say a credit card. Uh, my dad gets credit cards under my name. He's like, oh, I'm doing it to build your credit and then uses it. And I've had a couple credit cards myself. And because I was unemployed back in 2022 um, for a good while, I had to use them. So I'm paying those off. But he kept telling me, oh, give those bills to me. I'll pay for it for you. He only pays minimal amount. And mind you, they both have debt on their own. So this is how this is how you grew up as well? I, this is how I grew up as well, not knowing that this is what they were doing. Sure. So of course. It, of course. Yeah, you never know because no it's idea. just what you know. It's just the way like yeah. my mom was like running up charge cards all the time. And it wasn't until creditors started calling that I was like, what's happening here? So like yeah. you don't understand it because that's all you know. But Ruby, I I feel like one of the things I'm trying to do in my life right now is I'm trying to stop using the words you gotta and you have to. It's virtually impossible because that word just flows out of my mouth like, you know, like me drinking a margarita. However, (laughs) 
So, however, I'm feeling very motherly right now, and I can't stop that either because I am a mom. And I just, I want to talk to you about boundaries. Okay. What boundaries do you have in place with your family? Because none of this is okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but there is, and forgive me, I'm going to be direct with you, okay? Sure. There is a complicitness in here. So, So my question to you is, why are you continuing to go back? I actually have been doing my best not to go back. So okay. right now I've taken over like all my credit cards and okay, good. I've, I've been looking into putting a lock on my social security, which is, uh, I think that you can put like three locks on your social security. So that's mm-hmm. something that I am looking into. You can also call the, there's those three credit companies, trans, whatever those, those yeah. three, and you can call and you can have a line item on your thing so that they don't open anything new without, without being in touch with you. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm going to do soon. It's just that they haven't opened anything in a while. This has been just like years in the making um, of how transactional our relationship is with my both my parents. Um, right now, I'm looking into separating my phone bill with my mom because we mm-hmm. share a phone bill. And it's so expensive because of her doing things like adding her boyfriend to the line without telling me and then I'm paying for it. So that's one of the many reasons why I moved to Oregon too is because Being physically away is such a hard boundary. And I was just ready to like separate from them in general. Um, I don't have a car right now because that car, my dad's driving it. So he took over that car because I don't want your name is on it as well, though. My name is on it, but I'm transferring my name. I'm transferring it to him because I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. And I'm also making sure that he's making payments because I'm like, if you're keeping this car and it's under my name right now, you need to make sure you make the payments. So it's almost like I'm, it, it feels like honest, because I read um, Being a Child of Immature Parents. I read that book a couple of years ago, and that's literally the relationship I have with them is just like yeah. treating them like children. Like, but they try treating me like their child because, again, they feel like they need to have a sort of control. So, but it sounds like the door is open, Ruby. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, yeah, like your, your boundaries soft. I I'm like, I applaud you for moving because yeah. I think sometimes Thank physical you. distance is the best thing you can do. It saves you because you you just aren't in their face, but like there's the practical and there's emotional here. Right. Yeah. So on the practical side, I'm going to say to you, I would love to suggest that you make a list of all of your okay. debts. Okay? okay. Um, I want you to have a list of every single debt and, with that, I want to make sure that you have an electronic way to look into these things because who knows where the bills are going. If they're mm-hmm. doing paper only and they're going to your dad or your mom or your brother, like you need electronic access to every single one of these and you need the amount of debt, the who it is, what it is, and you need it in a spreadsheet, okay? And yeah, then from there, do. you need to have another list of how for each one of these, you're going to untangle yourself, and okay. and and spreadsheet this put it in a project management tracker because this is going to be overwhelming it is 100% mm-hmm. going to be like holy fuck i can't do all this like i can't even even just untangling a phone bill with verizon will be 27 calls okay so now you're adding in a yeah. car and a title exchange you've now added in the dmv it's going yep. to be overwhelming but i don't want you to get overwhelmed. I want you to take it in small chunks and I want you to um, look at the ones that are tackleable first so that you have some wins under your belt. So like if it's easiest the car, then tackle that. If it's easiest the phone bill, tackle that. The phone bill should be not too difficult to just remove yourself. No, that's the easiest. Right? Yeah. yeah. Start there. So prioritize them and then write down what you need to do so that you are 100% free and clear. But the okay. very first thing is all those protections. You said I'm looking into or I'm going to or I'm thinking about putting a protection on my social security yeah. number. No. Like when we're done recording, that's mm-hmm. the first thing. Call Trans Credit Union, call the credit unions and and put the warning on your on your account so that new things okay. can't be opened up. I'm first talking absolute hit the ground protection for you. Okay. Okay. But and here's the big but, right? Okay. This is just like anyone who's in debt or anyone who like I will always make the comparison to me and my weight because I want I never want you to feel alone like I'm coming at you like I know how to lose weight. And I still gain weight. 
Yeah. Like there's some emotional component. Like if I'm talking to somebody about finances, I'll say, okay, we're going to consolidate it in one thing and you're going to pay it. But if you're mm-hmm. still doing the shit over here on the side, it doesn't matter all the work that you do because it's just going to come back. So that's your homework is to start there. Because okay. again, like much like we did another episode of finances um, earlier in the season, a woman named Danielle, and we couldn't actually get to saving mechanisms because you've got work to do to come out first. Wow. And you have a lot of work to do to clear the decks. I definitely do. But we have to look at the patterns and the boundaries. And so my question to you right now is like, I'm, I'm saying a lot of things like, how are you feeling about what I'm saying? Because there's real family shit here, Ruby. Like, how yeah. are you feeling? I feel like I needed to hear this because it's just like, it just reminds me, like, I've done a lot of emotional boundary work with my family, but now the real, like the real root of it is the financial boundaries that I need to work on. And hearing that, one, it makes me want to cry, but also in a good way where it's just like, oh, someone understands, like, this is what I'm going through. And it's like a, it's like this tether that I have with them that is so difficult to cut off that it feels like I'm cutting off metal. Yeah. And you're reminding me that it's a lot easier than that. It's a lot, but it's a lot easier than that. And I need that reminder because I just, I can't remind myself that because here I am. I'm just like, I want to have this emotional relationship with them, but that's not going to happen as much as I try to. It's, it's more transactional and I can't have that relationship with them anymore either because clearly they just tried to destroy. I didn't finish college because of that. I lived out of my car for two years because of that, um, because of this financial hold that they like to have on me. So but that's Ruby, a, that's but a, Ruby, mm-hmm. you you twice in this in this sentence, you're saying it's a financial boundary, it's a financial hold. This is emotional what they're doing. That is true. It is emotional. Like this is, I would shoot myself in the foot before I would do this to my mm. child. Like it's like there's an emotional abusive component to what's happening. It's not. It's, it's not okay. It's not. It's it's definitely deeper than transactional. So I just graduated from therapy for the first time in five years. And thank you. I was going to ask you if you're seeing anybody. That was, and I'm sure Steph I was. Am. I could see her little smile. <laughs> I did, but I'm looking, I'm taking a break because I've been in therapy for five years. Yeah. And he's just like, you're doing so good. And I'm doing good with myself. It's just like the bigger things like this, like the emotional abuse that I'm still recovering from. Yeah. So that's going to, that's probably, uh, that's probably, it is, it is going to take years for me, but yeah. you know what? I, I moved out here to be patient with my process. Good. good. Um, I need to just have this cut off with them in order for me to grow. So that's where I'm at right now. It's a lot of. <laughs> it is. A lot. It, it is a lot. But I really, I applaud you just for even taking this on right now. It's, it's this is not easy, and it's it's not easy to like look at the people who raised you and loved you and say you did not have my best interest at heart. You did not take care of me. Yeah. That is not easy to do, and I think yeah. that's work that like I can only speak for myself. I'll be doing for the rest of my life. And I I also applaud you for maybe saying like right now I need a minute. Like I need a minute. Sometimes like I think the work comes in waves. Like you may be like, you're like, oh, I'm in like a big despair pit and then you're yeah. shoveling and you're shoveling and then you come through and then you're like, oh, this is nice right now. And it doesn't mean you don't know there aren't things that you still want to work on or that you yeah. want places you want to get to, but it's okay to take a breather and be in the world and enjoy your life a little bit. You deserve that, especially given what you've been going through. Yeah. Thank you. I, I definitely do. It's just like I... I so will still have this financial burden back of my head, but I'm trying not to let that take away from just enjoy going outside into Forest Park and going on a hike. I'm just yeah. trying to enjoy bits and pieces of life and moments of life with my partner yeah. and just try to move forward from all of this. I, I think one thing that might be helpful for you, because I, I know that like when I'm in the middle of like shit, it all collapses in on itself and it all becomes tangled and, and whatever. But in this case, you, you've got two things that are collapsed. And one is the actual like physical things that you need to do and the tasks that need to be completed and the separation that needs to yeah. happen. And then there's the emotional work. And I think it would be really okay for you to just be doing the tasks to separate yourself further, you know, to, to make sure you're not connected financially in any way to any of these people and that they can't continue that. 
Yeah. And then to start to chip down at the debt. Because like once you get it so there's no new coming in, it, it is just simple math. You can just take a portion and pay off your lowest piece of debt, the one okay. that's the small. Just like I said, if Verizon's the easiest thing, you start there, get a win under your belt. So if if, if there's a very small yeah. credit card that's from Marshalls or I don't know, some stupid like the Gap talked you into it, 30% off, here's a new charge card. And, oh, they totally did. Yeah. <laughs> don't get those cards, people. That should be illegal. Um, Seriously. And, if that's your first one and you can, you know, get rid of that, great. So all that yeah. physical work you can do. What I want to remind you, though, is the self-care piece, especially if you aren't like currently with a therapist right now, um, to mm. when the emotional side comes up. And I think you'll know it when it's feelings, when it's irrational, when it's like you're not making logical sense or you're mad at your parents or they're bringing you into a fight and they're saying, well, why won't you let me X, Y, and Z? Then you're in the emotions and you're not over here in the tasks. And then you just know you need support. Yeah. Also, it's deep rooted in the fact that too, like I relied on my mom specifically financially, especially in my early twenties. Like she would pay for my rent if I wanted to live in a studio or I lived with my sister for a, a few years on and off. And she paid for that. So it hasn't um, been all bad. It hasn't been all bad. But she cut me off financially right when I was about to graduate from community college. She cut me off around that time because of who I was dating. So <sighs> that's interesting. They were just, I mean, it's awful, yeah. but it's also interesting. Like it's like a horrific thing to do to your own child. But it's also interesting yeah. that it, it sounds like money equals power in your family. Oh, it does. hundred percent. My grandmother likes to think that she's the godfather and it's like, you guys need to calm down. Like we're, this is not the family dynamic I want. <laughs> we're not a Coppola movie. Like, please stop. You'd be far more wealthy. <laughs> it, thank you. Exactly. I mean, she technically is because of how much property she owns. She's just very, she just doesn't like to share that with her family, yeah. but that's because of how people would abuse it in the family. That's why she doesn't share it. So there's just like a whole generational trauma of really shitty oh, yeah. relationship to money and using money to hold over people. Because it does, I now like, well, the thing that you said earlier about them trying to control you with money is a lot clearer now. Like yeah. if you do this, you can't have that if you do this. But then it sounds like they also just have horrific financial habits. And they were like, well, almost like you're like a piggy bank. Well, we could just get over into that. And there's more money over there. Yeah. So it sounds like it's a combination and it's messy. It's very messy. I mean, and then the way that they have been managing it has caught up to them, actually, Yeah. to the point where my dad's asking me for money. I'm like, I'm moving. Like, there's no way I can give you anything right now. Oh, my God. No. And it's to a point where my mom owes so much debt. She owes like around $10,000 because she went to Mexico, got a procedure done on her body without having the money for it. And then just a bunch of people that she owes money to. So it, it's caught up to them. And they're both in a really fucked up place right now. So I want you to consider some kind of a financial boundary with them where you you have a sentence that you say, and I don't know what that sentence is, but it's, okay. I won't talk about finances with you or like finances are not part of our relationship. Like, so I don't want to talk about that. We can talk about anything else. Like I consider trying Oof. something like that on because you, you don't need to know about her procedures because it's just going to give you more anxiety. I've done that before, and my dad circulated around different topics oh, and then sure. came back to it. I'm sure. But he then, tried. And then you maybe excuse yourself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, then you have to say, like, if you're going to do this, if you're going to keep breaking my boundaries, then I'm going to have to go. Yeah. I had a hard boundary with my mom that was like, if you call me and you're drinking, I'm not going to continue the conversation. And it was horrible to have to say that to her. And it was horrible yeah. the several times when she did call me, she was drinking. I had to say, you've been drinking and I have to go now. And I'll, I'll try you later. And it was, and it, it was, it wrecked me, but I knew I had to protect yeah. myself. And like, I don't think right now you're protecting yourself. It's just something to no. think about. Okay. It sounds like the part that's sticking with you is that there's like a manipulation of you by them. Um, and something that you mm -hmm. said was like, when Robin asked how you felt, you said that you, you could cry because... I mean, you didn't use these words, but it, it sounded like because it was aff affirming or like validating that your experience isn't that that it should be. And I think a lot of times when 
people, well, I'm just gonna say like, I, you know, Robin and I talk about this all the time. If you have like family trauma, like when the people that are supposed to with air quotes, take care of you, not air quotes, actually, they're your literal parents, yeah. they should be taking care of you. They really are you. supposed to. <laughs> yeah, your little parents. They really are. <laughs> but yeah, like the people that are supposed to take care of you are like doing things that are not necessarily in your best interest. It's hard it's hard to both love your parents because you obviously want to. Yes. Like, everyone wants to be, like, loved by their oh parents, God, yeah. right? And I know you said, like, I want to have, like, an emotional oh, yeah. relationship with them, but they're doing these bad things. And I can relate to that so much. But, like, something that I think is very nice is whenever I have a conversation with, like, a Robin or someone and they're like, well, I would rather shoot myself in the foot than do this to my own kid. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm not crazy feeling this way. And this is not like, quote, exactly. unquote, normal behavior for like a family dynamic. Yeah. And so one thing that I try to do, and it's different, but the same is like try to find little ways that I can like self-validate so that in moments when I don't have a Robin, I can be like, OK, am I checking in to make sure like, you know, just like giving yourself that validation. This is not normal. Okay. I don't deserve this. You're not crazy for thinking this is weird. Because I think a lot of times, especially if there's like a manipulation with parents, it's hard to then. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure probably so they've also subtle. totally gaslit you just based it's on so the like subtle. portfolio that you're giving of who they are. My parents oh, are yeah. like that too. So I think, you know, trying to undo some of that in your own brain can be like really self-soothing. And it can be very difficult to do alone. Oof, it is very difficult to do alone. I'm just, I'm grateful I have, um, Tim is, is my partner's name. Yeah. I'm so grateful I have him in my life because like he, if I'm going through like the emotions of, and they're not as bad as they used to be because I, I check in with myself through therapy. I've learned how to, yep. um, but still like he'll notice signs. He's like, are you okay? Like what's going on? And he's just so, such a supportive human being, even though he's going through his own stuff too. Just so supportive. That's amazing. It is amazing. He's amazing. And honestly, that's what's helped me through so much of this too, is just like realizing my own self-worth through all of this, because I am not, I'm not crazy for, I had to like tell myself this story like over and over again. Like, I'm not a crazy person. This is no. not normal. Like your mom should not be treating you this way. No. I found out from my therapist that the first session I had with him, I told him a little very tiny bit about my parents and he was just like oh so you're both both of your parents have mental health issues and your mom might be a narcissist and I started bawling like yeah. I could not stop crying I was like what my mom a narcissist and I started to notice the signs and working through that uh, yeah. working through having a narcissistic mother she doesn't know that she is but that's really hard <laughs> they almost never do yeah. And that's also hard because, like, you still want to be, like, loved by your parents and you want to love your parents. So it's hard to be, so like, much. both of these things can be true. Yes. Yeah. And also there's, like, you know, I, I, again, I'm thinking about my mom because there's so many comparisons of parents who are hurting you, right? Yeah. There's this thing of, like, holding hope that they'll be the person that you hope or want them to be. And then sometimes Oof, yeah. you have to understand that, it doesn't matter. They're not that person right now and their behavior is harming you. And yeah. and you doesn't mean you don't hold hope that they will get better. Like you can hold that, but you can also take care of yourself at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of pain and grief. And that's why it's like, I think some kind of a group, something like Debtors Anonymous or a financial right. support group. There's something that's interesting about a large group where you don't have to come and lay your soul bare if you aren't ready, but you can just listen. And there is something incredibly validating about sitting in a group and hearing your story. That's true. It's really important that you, Ruby, not feel alone. You're not alone. But it's also really important that you remember yeah. all the time that this is not your fault. Oof, not my fault. That's a, that's a very big statement. I have to take a breather for that one. Give me one second. Um, who? That's not my fault. That's so. Thank you for saying that because, like, I blame myself for all of this constantly because I am being blamed for it. Young twenties me right now feels very validated. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I, <laughs> thank I hope. You. I hope. I hope. Even as I'm saying that there's a connection to you with this that you don't hear that it's your fault because that's not what I mean. I mean that yeah. you are born and raised to be yeah. a part of this soup. Like it, and it is yeah. just like a soup with like, it's like alphabet soup, just like things are floating and you're all just bumping on each other. And then that's your whole world. And by moving to Portland, you've taken the first step of being like, I'm in this different soup <laughs> and that's, it's a better and, soup. It's yeah. warmer and I like it and it's safer. Um, but the next step after that 
are, are the emotional boundaries that are going to stop letting them in. And yeah. that that will be, you don't set a boundary one time. You set a boundary a million times and it will be work and it will be mm -hmm. hard and it will be, the emotional side of this is going to be a hundred times more difficult than the tasks, which is why every once in a while, just do a task. You'll feel great about yourself. Look what I just did. I just paid off Marshalls. <laughs> That's like, true. Great. Those tasks are going to be there to bolster you and they're going to be there to remind you that you are coming out of this. And I have in my in my vision, and you're going to make it your own way, but in my vision, the, this chart has a checkbox. Oh, I've so already started like see... a checklist. Have you not? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, stand by. I'll be sending you the Google Doc at the end of this recording session. But it's like, I want you to be able to check things yeah. off. I want that. I want yeah. that physical so you can go, fuck yeah. Like, look what I just did. I fucking did that. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm yes. already like creating like a mental like checkbox as after this, I'm going to create one today yes. because I, I need a checkbox. Yeah, because like you what, need to, wins. Like what I can do. Yeah, you need wins and you Ooh. need to remind yourself that you are not your parents and that that may be how you were raised. But you are you yeah. already took so many steps. You know what I mean? Even just reaching out to yeah. our dumb show, saying like, I need a little bit of help. And I always say that like this show to me, we just help you pick it apart so that then you can go do the next thing that's gonna support you. And yeah, and hopefully you have some next things that you can then go to so that you can keep moving forward. But every step that you take, you're different from your family. They're not asking for help. Okay. They're continuing the same behaviors. And maybe down the road, you'll be able to have a healthy relationship. Maybe not. You know, that's also something Steph and I talk a lot about, about like the continual work with our families. And in, in many ways for me, and this is going to sound like the weirdest statement, both of my parents dying gave me space. I can just love them right now. I can forgive them mm. for the things they did to me because they're not doing bad shit anymore. They can't because they're dead. Yeah. So it's harder when they're around and still fucking up. But yeah, that's possible. A decent relationship. You were a kid. You can't control the things that happened to you when you were a kid. You can't control the house you grew up in. You didn't True. choose your family. Like that is a lot of stuff that has just been literally done to you. I like to look at my life now moving forward. Like, what am I opting into? What like what behaviors am I participating yeah. in? What am I allowing into my life and not allowing? And that also just makes me feel like I have more control over the situation. But it's true that you have control. Yeah. Like, this is your life now. And you get it to is. choose what you allow into it. I know it's not as simple as I'm making it seem. But like, in my head, it's helpful no, to like right draw there. a line in the sand and be like, is this continuing? Or is this something that has happened and I can heal from it? Yeah. It, and to Steph's point, like Steph's saying, I know it's not as simple as I'm making, but in some ways it is. Yeah. Like it would be good for you to set boundaries. It would be good for you to clean up the debt and move forward. It would be good for you to continue to gain healthy habits towards your finances. Mm -hmm. That said, it doesn't mean because it's simple, it isn't going to hurt at times or isn't going to feel hard or emotional. It definitely will. Yeah, I mean, I'm just learning how to like basically reparent myself this entire like this yes. process will also financially, not only emotionally, but financially now I'm learning to parent myself yeah. through this and be my own mom, dad, whoever. Yes, yes. And chosen family. Like you found it in your partner, Tim. Family. You know, like I put did. people around you. Like Steph and I have some of the best conversations. Like she's another person that I uh, like, put around me that is good for me. I put people around me who are good for me. And if you are not good for me, yeah. you are not around me. What would your life look like if you we're feeling healed in this area. What would it look like? And I don't want knots. Oof. Like I would not be in debt. I want what it would look like. And this is a really hard question that you may not be able to answer right now. But even if you had a couple of yeah. thoughts. I mean, the first thought I would think of is just like, I would just be able to take a breather. Like a vacation? A vacation. I mean, I would probably take a vacation, but honestly, I would be able, I feel like I would mentally be able to do what, Ever I want to pursue career wise, um, I feel like I'd be able to do that without feeling like this like grudge around me or feel like this tie around me. Yeah. So I feel like I'd be able to breathe and have control, which is something that I feel like I don't have in that space right now. 
I have to control myself emotionally and other yeah. aspects of my life, but just not that. Yeah. I'll just feel liberated. That's the biggest thing. I'll be liberated. Whatever I'm doing in my life, who knows? But I just know I'll be liberated and I'll be okay. I love that. I absolutely love it. And like this could be your year of liberation. And I'd love for you to mm. continue drilling down on what liberation looks like. Like you, let's say you take a walk today. You like liberation looks like I'm going on vacation this spring. Liberation looks like I don't have to stay in a job that isn't wonderful for me because I have a savings cushion. Liberation looks to me like I have my own family traditions, like just like free wheeling, spitballing. Yeah. What does it look like to you? Whether you journal it, whether you say it, whether you sing it, just like dreaming what Ruby wants to walk into. Yeah, I definitely need to write more about that because I don't, I, I think about the future, but I try not to write about the future because I'm just so trying to figure out the present right now that thinking about what the future looks like, it's just, it's a blur. Yeah. And it, especially because for me, finance is tied to career path. And because I'm so lost in both spaces, thinking about that, it's just like, what will it look like? Sometimes I lose that hope, but I still need to continuously write about it. I was going to say, because you said, like, my future is that I'm liberated and I'm okay. But, like, you are okay. You are safe. You're That's okay. True. You're, like, your own person now. You're on your own. You've created this oh, safety yeah. nest. Safety nest? Safety net, I meant to say. Safety nest is, works too, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Around yourself that I think, again, like, that validating piece, I think it's healthy to, like, remind yourself of that. Yeah. I remember one episode, Steph, you told it was either Susan or Aurora, like our second, first or second episode, but you told the person for homework to put little sticky notes around the house and like, I am safe, oh. I am okay. And I love the idea of that for you of just reminders, like it's not my the fault. Sticky notes? Yeah. Just like, so any place like, is it in the kitchen, on the fridge? Is it like by your bedside? A places where you are that you just will have that. I bury things in my to-do list sometimes. Currently I have buried in my to-do list and I, and I don't see it every day. I just see it some days and I always need it when I see it. And it says, as a creative being, you will be more productive when coaxed than when bullied. And I love that. And I have an email that I sent to a, a letter I wrote to myself from the artist way that's going to send to myself at some point. And I have other things. Yeah. Like I just bury things so I come across them when I might need them. And I could see that, you know, I just want to put a lot of support around you, Ruby. Like Thank I just you. want a little force field around you because I think you deserve it. Thank you. I, I need a force field. <laughs> what is that? That's the staff just put up a sticky. I am safe. I'm, yeah. I'm safe. I'm kind. I'm loving. I am loved. And that's my like everywhere. I mean, I started that when I was like a kid in therapy. That was like my post meditation thing that I would say to myself. But now I have it like everywhere. I've never tried the post-its thing because I'm just like, oh, that's Oh, it makes you feel cheesy. so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, it's I'm like it's cheesy. I'm not going to do this. And then I'm thinking about it more and more because this is like, I think the third time someone's told me you need post-its around your house. And I'm just like, okay. Um, How many people yeah, have to I tell mean, you I, before you listen? I, exactly. So um, <laughs> maybe one more. No. <laughs> Ruby, this has been so wonderful. I just, I just want to thank you for being so open and and willing to talk about this. Yeah. This is, it's, it's always difficult when you have your own problems, but it's, it's even, I think, even more when you're like outing family and people because even when our family do things to us that are hard, I find myself at least still trying to protect them, and it's a really yeah. difficult thing to untangle sometimes, and so. I don't know. I'm very, the mom in me wants to just say, I'm very proud of you. And I know that Thank you're going to, you. you're going to walk through this and, and you are going to reparent yourself and you are going to like learning the finances. You can do it. You really can. Yeah. I'm putting in the work to do it. Yeah. Starting with that spreadsheet. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. You have reached the well adjusting expert of the day. I'm Asia Evans. I'm a licensed mental health counselor who focuses on financial therapy, and I help people understand their relationship to money so that they can live their best life. And I'm based in New York City. If somebody is using your credit, like I want to be clear that this is abusive. It's financially abusive if you are not okay with that happening. And I think when we hear the word abusive, it's jarring and shocking to people. So I want you to just kind of take a minute to understand that this should not be happening. So there's definitely an element of control in this. And I think 
especially when it comes with finances, people underestimate how much financial control other people have over you. And that could be emotional manipulation. A lot of it is financial manipulation and financial abuse in that you don't have any options when you don't have any money to move out of that situation. And I think a lot of times people don't recognize it because they either have been told not to worry about it, they believe their family members that it's not a big issue, or they're scared or feel like they don't know enough about financial information to do anything about it. So the first step that I would say, if you find that somebody is using your social security number and taking out lines of credit or putting a bill in your name or not paying it, I would first say, if you were able to have a conversation with them, Let them know that you do not want this to happen anymore, that you are uncomfortable. This is not okay with you and you want this to stop. Hey, I'm going to freeze my credit. People cannot open new lines of credit. They cannot get a new credit card. They cannot get a loan. Make sure that you know what's going on in your own life financially. If you freeze your credit, it's frozen. So (laughs) you just have to be aware of what your plans are financially so that you're able to take the right steps if you're going to freeze your credit. And please check your credit reports. Credit Karma is also a really great way to kind of monitor what's going on with your credit through an app, and that might alert you if um, new lines are coming up too. So look at your credit, friends. And then I would say if you can, lock your social security number. If you find that your family is using your social because they are the people who may have had it at first before you even knew what that was, I would say that it might be time to lock your number so that people aren't able to use it and do anything with it. Now we're going to get less of the concrete and more of the emotional, which is it's going to be really difficult. If you have a conversation with your your family or friends or anybody that you know that's doing this to you and they are not willing to stop, they consistently are moving past your boundary, then it is going to be time for you to start creating space. Now, creating space could look like moving away. Creating space could look like I am not going to engage with you on a regular basis and pretend like everything is okay when this is not okay. And what this space is doing is you holding firm to your boundaries, you telling the people around you and in your life who are taking advantage of you financially in this way that this is not okay. You do not have access to me when you are hurting me in this way. And just because you are okay physically doesn't mean that it's not an emotional burden. It's very stressful to have to walk around with all of this debt that you did not accumulate and worry about how you're gonna pay it back or what you're gonna do. I am going to say there is the option of taking legal action. I would not start with that. I don't think everybody needs to go that route. But if it is very severe and you find that people are not listening, they're not respecting your boundaries, they're not respecting you, and you are okay with the consequences that will happen from potentially getting legal involved, then it might be time to just say, like, I have to cut ties and I also need to legally handle this situation because it's gotten outside of my control. And then I would say you have to take a good hard look at what you want the relationship to look like moving forward. If you are comfortable creating this space and saying you have done so much damage to me, not just financially, but emotionally and a manipulation and gaslighting me into thinking that this is not a big deal, I cannot have you in my life anymore, or I can only have you in my life in this way under these circumstances. And I think boundaries are so difficult for families because we all want to believe, no, we don't need any space between us. We're family. This is amazing. I love you. I care about you. And that may be the case, but they can still be hurting you. And even though it may not be intentional, it can still have an impact. And I always say communicate. I am a therapist, so I'm like, have a conversation, have a conversation, have it until you're blue in the face. And if you feel like I am going to be better off if these people do not have access to me, then that may be the route that you have to go. And then I would also say, get some support. Like, who are you leaning on? Who are you talking to? Whether that is a partner, friends, a therapist, that's a lot of trauma and a lot of grief that you have to navigate when you are trying to heal from all of this happening. And it's hard and sad and painful. Woo. All right, folks, that is it for today. But before we go, I just, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Ruby, first of all, just for listening, but also for reaching out and trusting us to chat with you about your life. 
And I also want to say a big thank you to Asia Evans for coming back and being our expert of the day once again. For more Robin, and you may need that, you probably don't need it, but like if you do, you can follow me at Real Rob Hops on all the platforms, all the socials, as the kids today say. Well Adjusting is an edit audio original series. It's exec produced by Steph Colburn and Robin Hopkins. Our producer and editor is Maria Passingham, and our production manager is Kathleen Speckert. Thank you to the entire edit audio team and to you for listening. Oh, hey, before you take out those AirPods, this show is just for entertainment. If you are in need of help, please, please, please reach out to a professional. Go ahead and get that help. You deserve it.